What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have several areas that we need to continue to keep an eye on. We have this area right here that is expected to develop potentially into a tropical system or subtropical system. We have several tropical waves that I have continued to keep an eye on over here in the main development region due to the conditions that are going on. We have this blob of storms, which was a tropical wave that I'm no longer really that concerned about, primarily because of how sheared that environment is. But we'll go ahead and jump right into this. This is what we got according to the NHC right here. We now have a 50% chance of development in the next seven days as of 2 p.m. in uh, on Ju July 11th. An area of low pressure is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms several hundred miles east-northeast of Bermuda. Environmental conditions are expected to be marginally conducive for st some development of the system, and a subtropical or tropical depression could form by in the next few days while the system generally moves eastward. By the weekend, the low should turn northward, bringing the system over cooler waters, likely limiting additional development. 30% chance in the next 48 hours, 50% chance in the next f seven days right here. So that's the situation we have going on right here. And we take a look back at the satellite imagery. This is what we got going on over here. We also have these uh, blobs in the MDR. And we'll get to the MDR and potential development there in just a little bit. But this area right here, disorganized showers and thunderstorms. I'll be honest, I, unless this thing starts to organize qu uh, quickly... I'm going to I'm going to say that the chance of this developing it's still there absolutely. It just has a limited time span. So today is Tuesday and if it doesn't develop by Friday, then it's likely not going to develop primarily due to cooler waters. If we take a look at the global sea temperatures where this system is at right now, it's around 27 degrees Celsius, which is just over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you who live in the United States, 80 degrees is that magic number for hurricane development over there. But across the Atlantic, if you look at this, we're looking at 29 plus degrees Celsius or about 84 plus degrees Fahrenheit from the uh, from basically the coast of Virginia over here, through, like a few hundred miles away from New Jersey, through, almost all the way through the Gulf of Mexico, through much of the Caribbean Sea, and even some of the main development region over there. And we'll go ahead and zoom in on this real quickly because we have a huge area of, plus, of 28 plus degrees Celsius from the MDR all the way to the Lesser Antilles, all the way through the Caribbean over there. And that there's a that 29 degrees Celsius is basically sporadic throughout the main development region over there. And I've said this before like a broken record, and I will continue to say this. We are looking at record w warm waters right here. And if we're taking a look at the OHC, we're looking at record levels of OHC. We're looking at some areas over here. Like this one blob off the coast of Jamaica, there are a couple of areas that I've looked at on other maps that have over 200 OHC in that blob right there. And if we compare that to 2020, that we weren't even close to that across, and this wasn't even as widespread as it is now. Like This is what you would typically see in, in a hyperactive hurricane season over here with the OHC just really starting to ramp up starting in July. It's already July this year, and things have already, like, this looks like, to me, more like late August, early September than it does, like, like mid-July. So, that's what we got going on right here. The loop current is absolutely exploding in OHC right there. We're looking at values of over 150 already in the early to mid parts of July. If we take a look at the shear over here, the shear where this blob of tropical systems are over here, that wave, I'm, it's kind of starting to, t uh, to limit its development, so I'm not really that concerned about it. There is this wave that's going on over here that's in good conditions, as well as one in the eastern Atlantic Ocean over there that has I've been keeping an eye on over here. It is entering better conditions for both w moisture and wind shear as well as the warm waters. All of these are something we need to pay attention to. However, if we take a look at the European model right here, we got pay we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and the moisture. Just kind of show you what we're looking at over here. If we take a look at the European shear, at least this area right here where this kind of medium, like this middle to uh, further to the Atlantic tropical wave is. It's detecting a low pressure system over here. It gets down to 1,011 millibars before it starts getting offline, but it's still in good condition. There is still some vorticity. The shear is still pretty good. Through there, there's a moist pocket that you will see in just a little bit. And the shear, I'd say, for the next five days really starts to calm down in the MDR. It does fluctuate a bit in the Gulf. It stays 
pretty stubborn in the Caribbean Sea, which is going to only inhibit more of that warm water to develop. And if thing, anything gets over there in that sheer weekend, it's going to rapidly intensify as we look at that. And then starting after that, the shear does start to strengthen quite a bit across the main development region. It fluctuates a bit in the Caribbean and the Gulf, as well as in the subtropics. But the MDR starts looking more like a sheared mess as more of that, as more of that Sahara dust, as more as that as more of these currents start to uh, form. But starting in late July, you will see less of that fluctuation, and you'll start seeing more of a weaker wind shear pattern as typical across these seasons. I apologize for doing that real quickly. Let me go ahead and show you the relative humidity. Where we're at with the MDR, though, the silver lining is there is a lot of more moist air starting to uh, form in the MDR. The Sahara dust is absolutely going to start, does start peaking a bit, but it does start to weaken after July 20th, According to the European over here. But based off of this, we still have moist pocket after moist pocket through the MDR. We're still kind of fluctuating with the moisture component right there. That is going to start changing in late to mid, uh, mid to late July, as you can see with these models right here, especially in the main development region. The Caribbean Sea should start typically in late July to early August. So definitely something we need to continue to keep an eye on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensembles because I was looking at the European ensemble run and I found something kind of interesting. I'd say about eight, seven to eight days out, about seven days out, you start seeing a potential for a tropical storms developing in the main development region and then starting to intensify as it approaches the Lesser Antilles, makes landfalls maybe like around a tropical storm strength right there. But this area right here is piquing my interest about nine days out right here. We start seeing more and more things and more and more ensemble members starting to develop. And this has been consistent for several days right here. And we have several of these calling for hurricane development right here. Several ensembles calling for hurricane or strong tropical storm development as it moves through the Atlantic right there, which is something that I'm continuing to keep an eye on and something I'm uh, continuing to keep, uh, keep an eye on. I know I just repeated myself, but you typically, like when I see something like this, I generally dismiss it off of, uh, off of it but this has been quite consistent for the last few days and the european is generally the most accurate tropical model that is out there we're going to go ahead and just for comparison show you the gefs and we'll actually go out back to the zero z and give you comparison right there we'll go ahead and show you nine days out and as you can see we still have some of those developing we have a couple of them developing to hurricane and strong tropical storm strength right there but it has it further to the east over there so definitely something to pay attention to and the geps doesn't even have this at all it does have a couple of scenarios that's starting to pop up but they're generally very weak so something there is still some variation over there but if there is some tropical development starting in the next eight to nine days we'll keep you updated on the pat's path predictor channel on that but with that being said we're going to go ahead and close the video right here i hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather you guys have been really Really loving the videos lately. We got 25 new subs yesterday. I want to say thank you so much for that. That really helps us out here on Pat's Path Predictor. It helps us out on Storms United. Gets more people involved and more people alert with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.